Over the past six years, Edinburgh Chamber has won a number of awards, fastest growing and most innovative chamber to name but two. But six years ago, it was in the doldrums, with static or falling membership. That quickly changed under Ron Hewitt's charge. It brought some stability to the chamber, though more recently it's been going through something of a financial crisis. But first, what were his thoughts on his time as chief executive? Yeah, pretty steep a ride until more recently, I have to say. It's been a very positive, but of course the recession has had its, brought its difficulties. But uh, it's been a terrific time, I have to say. I've enjoyed every minute of it. One of your achievements, though, must be actually taking the chamber to over 2,000 members and then, despite the recession, actually keeping it there. Yes, yeah, so I think it was around about 1,300 members when I arrived. And the important thing for me was to give greater relevance to the whole organisation. And uh, that meant that we had to have greater influence to make sure that the voice of our members were being truly represented. And to do that, I think you had to show that you commanded a fair audience. So growing the membership was very, very important. And we had a lot of success in that, right through up until the recession. And then things got more difficult, I have to say. But thankfully, you know, retention has been, again, strong. And uh, we are uh, now the, the fastest growing uh, membership organisation within the British Chambers of Commerce. Last year, of course, we, we won the uh, UK Chamber of the Year, which was, was terrific. But uh, you know, that's got to be carried on now. But you have to admit that the Chamber has been going through pretty rough times. You're leaving it with many fewer people than it was just a few years ago. Unfortunately, we had trouble, as well reported, unfortunately, uh, with one of our trust companies, Edinburgh Business Development. And uh, that meant, in order for us to make sure that that particular organisation survived, that we ourselves uh, had to cut our costs back because the contribution from them wasn't there. So we've had to lose, I think, only temporary. You know, I think we'll be back up to strength once the organisation, once, once EBD gets itself sorted and the Chamber continues to move forward. So what, in fact, are you leaving for your successor? Well, I think an organisation that works, you know, it's, uh, it's respected by all of its uh, stakeholder parts. Of course, their members, first and foremost. And that's the work that we've done, I think, to listen to our members to try and make sure that our products and services are relevant. It was the first thing that we did. You know, we're now helping businesses themselves grow and, and, uh, and actually represent their interests. And, of course, that there's other stakeholders, very important stakeholders, the political stakeholders, such as you know, local government, uh, national government, you know, Westminster government. Um, we are now seen as somebody who genuinely has got something to say and uh, therefore we're consulted in a wide, very wide brief. I think that's critical uh, for an organisation like this, that members know that when something that's not right for them, the environment isn't right for them to prosper, that the Chamber is seen able to do something about it, and we are. What about yourself? You're presumably not just about to retire. No, definitely not. I mean... Uh, one of the things that I'm absolutely certain about is that I've got huge energy. One of the things about the Chamber is a very demanding role. You have to have that kind of energy. But I know I've done that for six years, uh, uh, helping other businesses really get the satisfaction of completing deals that are important to them. I'd now like to take my own team through that process myself. So I'm very keen to look at an organisation which I can help grow and sustain. It's thought his successor will be named before Christmas.